So, hello everyone. Another talk, this time by Joshua Powers about HLinux APs Debian derivative a year later. So, welcome. Thank you. All right, so thank you. Welcome. Um, I really do appreciate being invited to talk here. Um, you probably heard, if you went to B Dale's presentation, um, heard talks about different open source projects that HP has been working on. One of them was HLinux. Um, and last year we were at DevConf. Um, kind of just a, did an ad hoc presentation about H Linux um, and wanted to come back and talk about where we were a year later. Um, so before I begin, I wanted to actually do a couple things. I wanted to do a quick survey and just kind of for my own and, and for those of us that work at HP, kind of see who, who's here, who's in attendance. So if you're a DM or a DD, could you raise your hand? All right, awesome. Um, if you work on what you would consider to be a blend, would you raise your hand? A few. All right, and then a few, if, if a derivative. All right, and finally, do you work for HP? Okay. <laughs> I was curious to see how many people were in the audience. All right, so um, HLinux got started as a part of Helion, um, HP Helion. That was our cloud software, enterprise cloud software product that got started back in 2014. Um, basically, the, the company said we're going to continue using OpenStack. We we're already using it in our public cloud business, and we were going to expand into doing more than just public cloud, but doing private cloud and hybrid cloud environments. Um, along with that, um, we started uh, as, as B Dale referenced, kind of an open source strategy, you know, as part of our business, not just a strategy as part of working in open source, but how the whole entire company will be part of open open source and using open source. Uh, moving forward. Uh, as a part of that, we said, okay, let's also look at what Linux is going to be running this cloud um, and said we should be doing our own um, or using, uh, using a de Linux that is not just um, bound to a single uh, corporation or one that maybe works with the community. And the obvious choice there is Debian, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, at, at a high level, um, what HLinux is is effectively Debian Jesse. It's always been Debian Jesse. Um, we started using it when it was still in testing last year. Uh, we took snapshots along the way, produced those, used those as shippable products, did some, a lot of testing and qualification on them. Um, when Jesse was moved to stable, we moved with it a couple weeks later, um, and we're still there today consuming the, the, the minor revisions as well. Um, we like that. We like where it's at. Um, there's been talks about moving back to Debian testing to pick up some newer features and functionality um, and, and to kind of have a faster cadence as well as being able to get our fixes in a lot faster and seeing them get rolled in faster. Um, however, for now, we're, we're very happy on, on Jesse. The thing that kind of sets us apart from Debian, um, if, if, apart from just using Debian, are, are what we call foreign packages. It's just an easy way for us to reference them internally. Um, these foreign packages are things that are uh, either in later versions of, of Debian, they're not even in Debian at all, they're proprietary stuff uh, potentially, um, and, and it's kind of just a catch-all for that. Um, examples of these would be uh, the kernel, right? We don't use um, the, the Debian kernel. And you see at the bottom there, we actually have been sticking to the long-term kernels produced by kernel.org and that are maintained for a couple of years. So we've been on the 3.14 kernel um, last year. Um, we're still on the 3.14 kernel. That's what we're shipping with our, with our products. Um, we do have the 4.1 kernel being pulled in now um, and looking to that for you know, the newer features, newer, newer uh, drivers, new, things like that. Still on the foreign packages, though, um, there are other products, uh, or excuse me, there are other packages that are not even in Debian. One of these examples is like Percona. That's a MySQL replacement, adds a lot of HA capability. Um, th there are por portions of, of, of Percona in there. There are also other portions of it that are used by our teams that are not there. Um, so their entire software suite isn't in there, but um, we do pull in that. Um, other examples were some of the Elk stack um, that has recently been put into Debian, and we've been able to grab some of it there as well. Um, but they continue to, to produce new things as part of the Elk stack, and so we're still having to pull some in and, and, and combining it and packaging it up. Um, the goal, however, is to get things into Debian wherever possible. So the Elk stack stuff work that we did there with packaging around Elasticsearch 
that's an example of what we want to do. We want to get stuff back into Debian so that we're not having to carry these things as extra things. Uh, it's better for the community, it's better for the people packaging that stuff up in the first place, and it's better for us, we're not doing one-offs, right? Um, so that's one of the ways that we're trying to be involved. The, the, the downside to this is, is we have to kind of move uh, quickly, both to get it in time um, for shipping, as well as um, just, just the amount of effort sometimes this takes. Um, it's packaging work. It, it takes a lot sometimes. Um, we talked about the kernel briefly. The other thing I want to talk about, why do we carry these longer term kernels? You know, we are doing enhancements. So we have partner programs. We're working directly with our hardware vendors, uh, companies like Mellanox and Emulex, where we're meeting with them and working to get their latest features that they have produced in hardware, make sure that we have the drivers that enable that, that hardware. Um, so we have a very close relationship, for example, with Mellanox. Um, and working with them to get the latest virtualization features like VXLAN, um, and other offload capabilities into our driver so that it, Helion can take advantage of it. Um, so there's a lot of customization and patches that we're doing there that we're driving that we don't feel is totally appropriate to be trying to get into Debian, at least initially. Um, so nothing proprietary there, however, it's just we're trying to get it in faster. Um, so that's kind of a high level overview of what Helion and HLinux are. So um, I said Debian was kind of the clear choice at the beginning of this, and it really was the fact that you have a such strong community uh, of people and you're not bound to a single company, right? Um, it's very easy for us to work with the community um, and, and to be involved in that community if we want to see something get done um, and, and change. Uh, if we work with another corporation, we're kind of at, at their... Uh, uh, we're bound to them and what their decide, what their business practices are, and what their business decisions are. Um, instead, we can come, we can be here at DevConf, we can talk to people, uh, we, we can work on the mailing list, we can go solve bugs that we see and actually see those things get fixed um, quickly. So um, in addition to that, HP has a very strong and, and lengthy history of working with Debian, right? HP has the, the telco extensions, which are still live and well. Um, are still being run to this day, uh, although the number of customers is, is sm very small, it's still work that we're doing um, using Debian um, with, with different telco and carrier grade customers. Um, so that's why we're here, we're using Debian. When we started doing this work, um, there were just a few of us and we didn't know what HP Helion was going to be like entirely. There weren't a lot of firm requirements set out yet. We didn't know what the distribution model was going to be, how customers were going to get their hands on Helion, how they were going to update and even install Helion, what that process looked like. Um, today it uses something called Triple O. It's an OpenStack uh, project. Uh, and when we first started this, we didn't even know if that was what it was going to be. Um, that process is still evolving and we we're still evolving with it. Um, however, this led us to make a lot of assumptions and a lot of kind of uh, decisions around, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. We don't want to mess anything up for Debian. If we're going to use Debian, we want to be good consumers of it. We don't want to give Debian a bad name. We don't want to break Debian. Uh, we don't want to harm Debian. You know, we want to work with the community. And, and, and the, the last thing we want to do is fall fa flat on our face and cause harm to come to Debian. So we have a very strong concern around, you know, how Debian is being used um, by both our eventual customers and through the products that we're creating, such as Helion. So kind of an example of this um, is, and I'll talk about this in, in a second, is, is something we did is we, we did something called rebranding, right, where we were taking each of the Debian packages that we were using, and we didn't want a customer to say, I've got this Debian package, it's broken, I'm going to go onto the Debian's IRC and complain. Well. For them to know that it came from us, we were sticking in uh, a tag, effectively, in, in the version string, plus HLinux, and letting people know very clearly that th you were getting this from HLinux, you were not getting this from Debian. Um, and, and we were doing this to packages, even those that, that we weren't changing, because we didn't want anything coming back to Debian uh, that was potentially bad or harmful. Um, so that was one of the kind of decisions, and I'll talk about how we've changed since then. Um, like I said, DevConf 14, we were, we were there in Portland. Um, Rocky Craig was there, got to do a quick ad hoc presentation on HLinux, talk about our kind of process, and we got great, so feedback, great, great amount of feedback um, and, and enthusiasm to seeing HP back 
at DevConf. Um, feedback primarily was around, you know, getting involved, using existing tools, you know, why are you doing it like this? Go do this, it already exists. And it was, it was a great education experience for us. Um, when we first were getting this out, you know, there were three of us that started in February, and it was, you will deliver something to us by the end of April. And so there was a lot of, you know, shortcuts taken, and a lot of, let's just get this done, let's get, figure this out, um, let's use a tool, try the tool, if after, you know, half a day we can't figure it out, let's move on to the next thing. Um, and so last, over, since DevConf, we've been able to take a step back and kind of review what we're doing. Um, does this tool make sense? Should we be using this? Let's get rid of proprietary stuff because that proprietary stuff takes our time, um, it takes a lot of effort for us to maintain it um, and deal with it, and maybe we're not doing it entirely in a very Debian-friendly way. Um, there's a better way of doing it. And so, um, you know, after DevCon 14, we were, we were kind of the, the paranoia and, and the, the fear of really hurting Debian kind of went away, and I was like, okay, let's get involved, let's, let's do things right. So uh, as far as an involvement, I think the, the, the best way to sum it up over the last year is we've definitely fallen short. Um, our, our involvement has really just kind of ramped up in the last few months. Um, with the help of Martin Micklemeyer and getting people involved, um, it was around the GCC5 effort. There were numerous patches uh, submitted, lots of defects reviewed and closed, um, including by a number of people in this room. Um, and, and so overall, it was just a great learning experience in getting us into the project. Um, some people have worked with the project before. Some people, um, for example, we hired four new employees, fresh out of college, no work experience, no Debian experience, and we got them involved, and some of them were already submitting, submitting numerous patches. Right? So it was a great kind of icebreaker to say, look, this is how you do it. Get into it. You know, we want this to be part of your day job, not just coming in here and doing what you need to do for HP, because Helping out Debian helps out HP in the long term, and so getting them in, involved in the community now is, you know, of the utmost importance to us. Um, what else? So uh, a number of bug fests that we had just kind of locally on our team. It was a great experience. It was fun to see uh, you know, a bunch of people just hacking away um, for a few hours, and it left them, you know, kind of energized to keep doing this sort of thing. Um, especially the new employees kind of saw it and went, this is really cool, I, I, I want to keep doing this. So we want to keep doing that. Um, in addition to that, you know, Martin worked on rebuilding the entire R64 archive. Um, HP has uh, an ARM system, the M400 Moonshot, um, able to take advantage of having that hardware on hand to be able to do some of this work. So that really is, unfortunately, the extent of the uh, direct contributions that we've had um, with respect to fixing things in, in Debian. And we feel that this is probably too short of a list. In fact, it is a too short of a list. Something that we want to get more involved in, um, whether it be packages that, that Helion's using, and we want to make sure that they're being taken care of upstream, um, other packages down the road that make sense for us, um, and other initiatives like I'll talk to here in a little bit. So I do have some other ideas of, of areas where we can be involved in, areas that we like to target here in a few slides. So I mentioned rebranding already once, um, and, and this I want to be is kind of an example of something that we took back from for, DevCon 14 and said, look, we cannot keep doing this. We have to do things the right way. Um, again, as I mentioned, it was around, the intent was hopefully good. You know, we didn't want to bring bad things to Debian. We didn't want people to come to Debian and be harmed by the work that we were doing. Um, we want them to come to us and say, look, this is broken, fix it, um, especially if it was us that was doing it. Um, so again, it was done by adding the plus H Linux to the version. Long story short is we started finding that this was breaking things. All right? We were trying to do this in an automated fashion, but with the version strings being so drastically different um, between different packages, some having you know, multiple pluses or different ways of having the tilde in there, all completely valid versions, um, it was causing, we were, we were starting to break things. In, in, in an effort to not break things, we were in fact breaking things. Um, and, uh, you know, we were simply were too paranoid about not breaking Debian, and we were actually causing harm. So we have removed that from unnecessary packages, packages that we're not touching. So those packages that we don't touch are, will have an MD5 sum of exactly what you get upstream. All right, they are identical. The packages where we are making modifications and rebuilding them 
um, and, and kind of still carrying them with, with changes, they will get an HLink string. So it's very clear that it's coming from HP and the HLink team. However, stuff that we're not touching no longer will be, will be messed with as it should be. Um, things that we learned out of this, though, was, um, like I said, the versions, there are some very crazy version strings out there. Um, it's, it's absolutely amazing to see, you know, we got plenty of laugh, laughter uh, seeing some of the versions, you know, 3.18 till the really 3.19, um, as well as just some crazy other strings that were in there. And so, uh, but all of them were valid. And, and, you know, there were many days where we would sit there and stare at the Demian policy uh, manual and go, is this actually valid? Is this really how it's supposed to work? And, and yes, yes it is. Um, and and you know, kind of out of that is all of the wisdom that you need to work with Debian is really online. And if it isn't, you can go ask on the mailing list. Um, you do have to stare at it sometimes. You do still have to let it digest, especially if it's your first time seeing it, um, just due to the immense amount of history behind the Debian project. You know, it, it's absolutely amazing. It's also a little daunting sometimes as being a newcomer and seeing, you know, it used to be this, then it was this, then it was this, then it was this, and having to trace that and understand, oh, that is a valid thing. Um, so, you know, it, it's a challenge, and it's a challenge that we're, that we're, we're up to, and we're, we're enjoying it. Um, so, so props to the community for having so much stuff online and having it updated, and, and for the most part being, you know, just an excellent source um, of knowledge. So um, <clears throat> one of the other things that we took away were the, were the tooling. So we were using a lot of proprietary tooling. And just by proprietary, I mean we, wrote, we went and wrote some stuff. Generally, this tooling was just wrappers around existing Debian toolings. So dpackage, scan packages, scan sources. Instead of using you know, Red Repro, we were, we were doing our own thing. Um, kind of a cool thing is that we made it multi-threaded so that we could do, build an entire archive, you know, from scratch in, in like five or 10 minutes. Um, but we don't need to be doing all this stuff um, ourselves. Let's use the existing tools out there. Let's use the existing tool chains that are out there. Um, we've also looked at Aptly to create smaller repos when we're doing some basic development and basic um, package development. Um, but we're moving to these packages. Let's, let's use them. If there's stuff that's missing, let's contribute it. Let's figure it out. Let's, let's work with the maintainers. Let's get rid of our, our homegrown stuff. We just don't need it. We don't need to be spending our time there either. Um, packaging, so some of the work that we're doing around packaging, it primarily focuses around git build package. Um, there's a wrapper for, for the git hook that will, will pass some information between git build package and uh, sbuild. And so that has made uh, packaging both for our team um, just significantly easier. We had a new one of the new employees come in um, well, I'll take a step back. I remember trying to do packaging uh, last summer and going, okay, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this, um, and you know, never having any experience in it. Read lots of documentation, a little overwhelmed, but you, know, you, you get there. The, the wrapper we have you know, basically simplifies the process drastically. Um, we've had a, a new employee come in, and we said, look, we need you to go build this. This is what we need to do. Go update the change log, run this script. Did it. He got a deb you know, an hour later, and everything was good. Um, so it's something that we've, we've been talking about, how, how can we contribute this back up, even though we're already using these tools that already exist, is this wrapper something that the community might be interested in, um, seeing at least in our scenario. It's not too tailored to what we do. So getting into some more like meaty areas where we're interested in, in contributing, um, first off is QA. So my background is in QA, started at HP doing QA, um, and HP obviously has, has decades of experience doing operating system development, right? With HPOX, you have 20 or 30 years of, of QA knowledge and QA experience and tools that were developed and test cases that were developed to test an operating system. Many of the people that work on our, in our organization have even come from the group that used to work on Red Hat and HP, HP uh, uh, being a big partner with Red Hat and selling lots of Red Hat servers. Um, there's lots of testing that we did there that, that made Red Hat better, made HPUX better. And all those tools are still, m many of them are still in existence. And what we w wanted to do is say, look, if we want to build and, and contribute and work with Debian and produce a, a distribution that's, you know, that's been qualified and is solid, then let's use those same tools. 
they were there, they worked for a good reason, let's, 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 let's get them back up and going. Uh, we have an internal storage tool that, that is proprietary, um, but will just destroy any storage that you throw at it and, and gives you a, an extreme amount of confidence of, about that storage. Um, and, and it's something that, we've wanting, that we're already using for, to qualify our distribution. And it's something that we want to see if we can apply it to Debian, and there's no reason why we can't. Um, getting it open source, that's going to be a harder step, but at least being able to say, look, we've run it with this, and we can explain how we ran it, um, that's just one example. There are other tools out there that, that we have, um, as well as the processes and, and the hardware that we have accessible to us, right? Now, we do sell more DL380s and 360s than anything else, but we have the M400 uh, ARM64 cartridge. How about we use that? How about we do testing with the ARM64 kernel in Debian and see what's going on there? Uh, if we can find out what tests people are interested in or features that people are interested in, what can we spend time on testing and qualifying there? Um, we also have access to vast quantities of drivers, right, for, for due to the different hardware that we have. We have I.O. from Mellanox to Emulex to Broadcom to QLogic to Intel to SolarFlare, you know, vast quantities of, of networking drivers and storage drivers as well as some weird ones with, around Fusion I.O. and things like that. Not all of it is, is open source, but some of it does have drivers for Debian. There's lots of enterprise customers interested in running Debian and still running some of the software, some of these hardware devices. Let's test it. Let's, let's actually get it and make sure that it's working. Um, the HP servers group actually does do some community testing today. Um, with Debian being treated as a community operating system, it doesn't go through its full gamut of tests, but we would like to push more of those tests that they actually do have onto both Debian and, and the work that we're doing with HLinux. Um, finally, around QA, you know, we spent a lot of time using, um, using Debian testing, and one of the things that we found was not that things broke, but that there was a lot of churn and there was a lot of changes going on. And one of the things that our own internal partners uh, required was, was some stability. And so uh, I know there are efforts around, you know, talking about how can we make testing a little bit more stable potentially. Um, what work could we do, be doing there, right? We've had some experience with it. We kind of know how it works. We've seen how a release works. What help can we be doing now, not at the end of a release, um, to, to help provide some of that stability um, there? HP servers. Um, has a whole series of manageability and other tools to interact with, say, ILO or the HP Smart Array um, driver um, or Smart Array devices. These tools are readily available today, um, and they're, they're, they're non-free software, but they are um, available without paying for them. Um, I forget what it's called on like the Linux software repository or the system software repository. Um, but we want to start lumping that stuff into HLinux and being able to deliver that as well, to you know, be able to take advantage of the value add that, that HP provides. Um, and finally, I've mentioned ARM64 a couple times. You know, we do have hardware that's out there. We have hardware on our team that's usable by our team members. But what about um, other people, maybe getting them access to it? Um, but also, let's, let's get ARM64 in, as, a, as a first class experience. Everything that you, can, you expect on AMD64, is it working on ARM64? Um, do those packages work? You know, Secure Boot, UEFI, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, you know, let's, let's work on it. We have the hardware available to us. Um, I think we have about, well, by the end of the month, we'll have about two dozen of these ARM64 servers um, or Moonshot cartridges available to us. So people on our team can start doing some work. Let's see what the community wants as well. Um, other areas of interest for us are around you know, virtualization, QEMU containers. So today we carry our own version of QEMU. Again, it's just tied to the most stable release upstream. Um, the, the individual is Andrew James, who is in the room, I thought. Where is he? Maybe he's not in the room. Well, Andrew James is here uh, at, at the conference. Um, I know he's been talking to some people about the work uh, that Debian's been doing around QMU. He maintains it and watches it for us. Um, he'll basically watch for critical CVs, get them to us within hours so that we can uh, republish things. Um, he also makes some, some tweaks and changes to, to prevent things like pulse, pulse audio from being uh, you know, compiled in. Um, so there are some changes that we like to make to, to keep it you know, free and also simpler for, for our customers. 
Obviously, there's lots of interest around containers, what that solution might be, you know, using Docker, what about other software components that need to go on top of that. It's something that we're interested in working with the community to see what else is out there um, and, and, and how are people using it, how are customers actually using it, what, is a, what does a typical solution look like, um, and where are there opportunities for us to help out, specifically around maybe manageability of all your containers. What does that look like? Um, Security. So we do ongoing vulnerability, secure, vulnerability scanning. We take advantage of a lot of the Debian tools that are already out there, as well as the, the security you know, that we get from uh, the stable, stable dash security. Um, there's also other work that we want to be doing around, around things like we have software in, in HP called Fortify, which allows for static code analysis. We have made numerous discussions with people inside around how do we take software that, that Helion is interested in and start scanning it, right? And being able to uh, contribute maybe those results back to the community in the form of patches or even just the report. Um, it's a big tool and there's a lot you have to do to get it set up. So it's something that we're slowly moving on, but it's something that we would like to move on at some point. In addition to that, there's the, uh, I have to forgive me, I don't know much about this yet, just got an email from it from a, another person on the team around uh, Oval or OVAL, um, there's two bugs that we've submitted uh, around getting it updated. I guess it was a way of uh, getting security information into, uh, into Debian and for, for certifications. Um, and so uh, that seems to have gone, uh, died down and the package is no longer maintained. And so we actually, in one of those bugs, have a uh, version of the package submitted, but none of us are Debian, uh, none of us have the upload rights, right? So. Um, those are two of interest to us as well. Um, secure boot, so number of packages that we've had to make changes to to get secure boot enabled. Um, with the recent announcement about the EFI team, we're heavily interested in getting involved in that. Um, that's right. <laughs> so Link Rosetto, who actually is here, and I can, I can actually see him, he's waving his hand. Um, he's one driving a lot of that work for us and is interested in getting involved there. Um, Again, HP has lots of servers that now are shipping with UEFI by default um, with the Gen 9 going forward, um, as well as on the ARM64 side, we're interested there to see you know, what work might need to happen there. Um, and so some of the work that he's done, and I'm sure he's happy to share his learnings there. All right. So the last thing that I wanted to mention is um, there was talk during um, Neil's kind of state of the state of Debian talk around, you know, they're calling, HP's calling things HLinux. They're getting all the credit for what they're doing. How's it going back to Debian? There's been talk this morning at the trademark discussion as well as the what is Debian discussion. Um, and, you know, quite simply put, you know, we, we are one of the companies that's working with Neil or has talked to Neil and said, look, we are interested in a way of getting Debian somehow in the name, right? We do not want to take credit for all this because it, uh, it's just rude and, and it's not what we're doing, right? We're working as part of the community. And so the community should be getting that credit as well. Right? We have no interest in forking. We have no interest in, in saying this is our thing and not your thing. Um, and, and so, you know, whether it ends up being Debian by HP, HLinux powered by Debian, you know, whatever that might be, we would like to see that happen. Um, we, we totally understand that, you know, we're not official Debian because we are making changes to it. We have our own kernel, we have our own foreign packages, um, and we even carry some non-free stuff around firmware and, uh, and other things, like I said. Um, so we feel that we're still close enough to Debian, right? It's just Debian with some customizations, some additional packages. And so we would like people to know that it is, in fact, Debian that they're running. It's advantageous to us and to our customers so that they're not going, what is this HLinux thing? I've got Red Hat, I've got Debian, I've got this, and I've got that, and now I have one more operating system I have to deal with? No, it's just Debian. Oh, I like Debian. You know, that, that's usually the response that we, we get. You know, we get on a phone call with a customer, they're all riled up, and then it's like, yeah, it's just Debian. Oh, okay, life's great. So, you know, at the same time, we're not completely changing everything, right? We're still based off of Debian Jesse for the majority of things that we have, the vast majority of things. Um, and it's always our intention to just use stock Debian plus maybe a few things that we need to that are special, like the kernel. Um, so, you know, not only do we want to continue working together, we want to be able to help out with this and figure out a way that, that you know, the community and, and HP can work towards something um, um, like this. 
So I think with that, again, a big thank you um, for the, the warm welcome. I know it was very nice during the job fair to hear a few people say, you know, it's nice to see you guys back here, um, and, and, and we really do appreciate it. Um, the help that we've gotten on the, the mailing lists, as well as the like the Derivian, uh, excuse me, the Debian derivatives mailing list, I really appreciate it. Um, and if you have questions or comments that we don't answer now, that's my IRC name as well as my personal email address to at HP. Um, and it is HPE now, I should say. Um, if you don't know, HP is splitting um, into two companies, and the vast majority of us that are working on cloud, or all of us that are working on cloud, are going to HP or Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And so our email addresses are changing. So that's why the E's up there. So again, thank you. Are there any questions? It's all crystal clear. Oh. Can uh, HP, com uh, probably not now, but would HP be willing and able to commit to uh, contributing to a test suite of uh, basically tests which determine, yes, this is a valid Debian, which can then be named, powered by Debian or whatever? Uh, we're, we're definitely interested in helping out there and, and actually understanding what does that mean and what does that look like. You're totally behind that. As well <laughs> as, you know, one of the things that got brought up today was, you know, uh, some sort of change log or being able to say what is different, we would like that. You know, we think it's in our best interest for our customers as well as for you to understand what are we doing differently, more than just some simple bulleted list with some way of saying you know, this is this is what we're doing differently. So yes. Will H Linux be of help to get official HP support for Debian proper? <laughs> for running Debian on HP hardware. So I will tell you what Steve Geary said. Um, so Steve Geary is the director of, of this lab that's working on HLinux. Um, and from what he said, um, and I, I can quote him on this, is HP announced full support of Debian a number of years ago, and then I pulled it away. Um, it made a big splash in the community. However, the number of people that were taking advantage of that support were apparently in the single digits. Um, it just was not used by anybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, BDL could probably fill that in. Yeah, it was really quite interesting. Um, when we did this, and what we did was we offered CarePack offerings, um, which is what the ProLiant server guys do for a certain level of support um, for Debian. And the number of people who purchased those were literally in the single digits. And what we discovered was that what people really wanted to know was if I load Debian on this box, is it going to work or not? And their way of asking that question is, do you, can I buy support for you from you for Debian on this box? And then they didn't actually buy it. They didn't want to buy it. They just wanted to know that they could and that that meant we had done all of the, the testing and so forth required to ensure that everything worked. The problem for us is that for that organization to be willing to sell that offering, they were doing real work to test and verify and do installation tests and certifications and all that. We're to the point in history now where um, the, the things that are required to use those servers are almost entirely all part of upstream kernel source content. And so there really, there, there aren't as many interesting questions as there used to be about is it going to work or not? Because it is just going to work. And along the way somewhere, we got the server organization to agree that um, there, were, there were no issues with hardware warranties or anything if you chose to run some Linux distribution that they hadn't heard of before. And so what sort of morphed is instead of having Debian as sort of the community distro that was sort of deeply supported, they ended up sort of agreeing to a broad but shallow uh, set of assertions about we support community Linux distributions. And so if you go now to hp.com slash go slash Debian, it will actually warp you to hp.com slash go slash community Linux, and there's a set of assertions there about HP works with community distros, blah, blah, blah. So what does all of that mean? Well, 
I think we need to figure out what the question is we would actually like to ask as a community. This is with my sort of Debian user and community and developer hat on. What is it actually important for a company like HP to be willing and able to say? And I think if we ended up in a situation where at some point in the future, the name of this H Linux thing has Debian in it somewhere, and you can buy support for that from HP, which is likely to happen at some point for some set of machines, then this question might just go away. Um, if any of you in the room have specific examples of somebody who would refuse to purchase uh, you know, HP's servers in order to uh, run Debian on them because of a missing support offering, I'd like to know about that because if, if someone is actually willing to buy support, <clears throat> then convincing the people who provide that support it's worth making an investment could happen. The problem is the only data point they have is we spent a lot of money in what they thought, you know, is a lot of money um, to enable all of this, and nobody actually really bought it. And so from a purely economic standpoint, con continuing to tell them you have to do this, you have to do this, when they got no money back for it just didn't make any sense. So, you know, this is the success and the failure, I guess, of Debian. We do such a good job of making sure things just work. Um, that, you know, once we cross the threshold of the device drivers for the hardware are all available in the kernel, there just wasn't any particular reason for people to want to spend money with HP to get Debian supported anymore. So that's my take on it, having been there through most of that history. Um, I, you know, if there's something I'm missing or if there's opportunities out there for you know, interestingly sized deals that, you know, would be enabled if HP somehow all of a sudden asserted more support for Debian again, please let me know because those are the kinds of things I could take back and talk to others in the executive community about. But right now, I, I, I don't really know how to make that argument to them. Are there any plans to commercialize H Linux separately from HP equipment in the same vein as RHEL? No. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, is there an HCL? Is there a what? Hardware compatibility list available. Uh, so yes, if you look at the Helion support matrix, there, there is a, there's a list of the hardware that we support today, both HP hardware and non-HP hardware. So how many of your people have you got working towards NM at the moment? Ah, great <laughs> question. Um, the, the new guys who have started submitting patches, they kind of know about the process. They're still getting their feet wet with it. Um, what I hear from them initially is, but I'm not doing a whole lot of packaging. I'm just doing bug fixes, right? So how do I just, I just apply? Should I just go through the process anyway? What, 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 what's the best process for them anyway? I think there are definitely some that would like to go that route. We've had to get a few people turned into at least uh, members. And so we're trying to figure out what, what's the next step. So if you have advice. Sure. Yeah, so the best thing to do is for, you know, if there's packaging teams or various other teams in Debian that you guys are already, you know, doing work alongside or whatever, just join the teams. Okay. The teams are typically are going to be very happy for more manpower. Okay. Um, and, yeah, jo join in and NM should be a breeze. All right. Thank um, you. Talking of which, you know, as you, as, you know, I waved earlier, the, the new EFI team, please. I spoke to Lynn earlier, and I've already had some discussion about the changes that you guys have. Okay. Um, again, we, we're an open team. Please join in. Okay. Uh, would there be any chances of getting uh, Debian support from HP on non-HP hardware? Like, for instance, you can buy support for, uh, for Ubuntu on uh, non-Ubuntu hardware. Did you hear that one? 
The, the answer I would give is that the one you already gave, which is that the existing H Linux portion of the Helion hardware compatibility list includes non HP hardware. Yeah. So that's the quick answer. If there's particular hardware you'd like to have supported that's not currently supported, have a conversation with one of us and we'll figure out what to do next. Yeah. We actually currently have a third party IHV testing program that we're pulling in and doing more and more testing. My understanding about your uh, kernel is that it's stripped down to all the drivers you need and only these, right? Yep. So by removing some drivers, then will it make uh, Helion work uh, not working on some hardware? So we have run across examples of that. The most of the time when we're referring to the drivers that we're pulling out, it's stuff like mobile devices and personal laptops and, and hardware devices that were used 30 years ago and aren't used anymore. Um, so that's where we're focused in. If it's uh, enterprise class or storage and networking drivers that, that are 10 gig or more or even 1 gig stuff, we generally keep those in. We're not going to pull everything out. We, we didn't go um, extreme and just say, oh, these are the very few HP things that, that we care about, and that's all we're going to include. There's still a lot of general drivers still in there. So third-party support, we have, we've had added a few things in there because we said, oops, we didn't mean to take that out, or we didn't realize that actually is still used. Um, but, you know, and that's part of this IHV program is to identify that as well. Other? So, so one of the challenges we have is we're trying to create a balance between uh, minimizing the number of packages, really driving more security and a smaller footprint um, that we have to worry about security on, and yet still providing the level of support across the hardware and, um, and IHVs, as well as other feature and functionality. So this is a learning process for us to figure out what that right point is to keep us uh, small and secure, and yet still support what we need to support. Any more questions? Cool. Thank you very much. So, thank you.